What was your I can't believe this is happening right now moment of your life? I was in Rio. My mother had just given some money to a homeless dude. Few after that a wild burglar appears. Holding a knife against her chest. She gave him her purse and he ran away. The homeless dude then stood up and said something like she's a nice woman. Do not steal from her. They started arguing and the purse came flying. Somersaults and all. Back to her arms. Taking a phone call from my twin from the hospital to say her husband didn't make it, after she'd found him unresponsive in VF and had done CPR on him while waiting for paramedics. Comma all the time her kids were at my house, I was looking after them, but she didn't want me to tell them as she wanted to tell them herself. Hardest day of my life. A million times harder for her. Some days I still can't believe he's gone. When my lawyer called me to tell me I won custody of my three kids. Then an hour later my ex calls looking for her child support check and I got to tell her I won. Edit. Just woke up and noticed my notifications blown up over this comment. To answer a couple questions. No I did not ask for child support. I didn't want to jinx my good luck and she wasn't working anyway so the cost of going for it didn't justify. This was in 1998. In Virginia. I live in South Florida. So I went up and brought them down. The main help and my biggest supporter was my girlfriend at the time. She has been the superstar in all this. She was willing to help me raise them. Of course I married her and we had one kid together over the years. Together 23 years. Married for 20. The other 3 I grown and moved out already. The day my daughter was born my sister showed up unexpectedly at the hospital. I assumed she was dropping by to see the baby. Nope. My dad was literally next door in the heart ward. This was a huge place and it was totally by chance. There were double doors between the baby and heart ward and he was on the other side with complications for heart failure. The emotions were so strong and conflicting I had to turn them off and I'm not sure they ever really came back. Checking a regular guest out of my hotel when I realized he was having a stroke. Mumbling. Repeating himself. Couldn't even sign his name. Called 911 so an ambulance could get him to a hospital. The moment it really hit was the next day when his wife called and said I saved his life. Like dude. I work at a hotel. This was not something I ever expected to hear. Semicolon. Or when I was 12 and sang with the National Children's Choir at Carnegie Hall in New York City. Even that young I knew this was a big deal. Finding out I had epilepsy all my life when I was 45 years old. Hearing I have cancer 2 days after my 28th birthday. Couldn't stop thinking. I am too young for cancer. The phone call I got, as I was leaving work. Telling me I needed to get to the hospital ASAP because the results of my bone marrow biopsy the day before indicate I had leukemia. Literally everything stopped. The doctor kept talking. But I heard nothing he said. Edit. I ray watched that Breaking Bad episode when Walt gets the news. It's definitely like that. The 15th of January 2019 edit. I had my day plus 100 bone marrow biopsy on 12 stroke 31 and got the results today. Everything is looking good. No evidence of AML. No evidence of FLT3. AML is bad. But having the FLT3 mutation makes it so much worse and harder to cure Yasa in all reality. If I had been diagnosed 2-3 years ago. I might not be alive today. My chimerism test shows 100% male donor cells. I'm female. So things are going very well so far knock on wood. When the nurse handed us our first child ready to take her home. I looked at my wife and immediately thought. Shti. I was in the hospital for my dad after he got into a fender bender. Everything was going fine. He only had a sore neck and some minor scratches. Up until the doctor came in. Shut the curtain behind her and told him we found some spots on your lungs when we scanned you. Completely unexpected and heartbreaking. Waking up to find messages from my friend saying he couldn't take it anymore and he was saying goodbye. 
I've never tried to call someone so quickly in my life and during the whole thing was just this can't be happening right now as it was the first time I'd ever experienced anything like this let alone the fact there was no warning. He's okay now but please if you are going through anything talk to someone about it. And my DMs are always open to anyone that wants to speak. Please everyone take care of your friends and family. Even strangers because that might just be what helps someone even if you never know. When I woke up with my head lodged in between the car seat and the wall of the car after being hit by a drunk driver. I was asleep in the very back of my Toyota Sienna while my mom was driving and I wasn't wearing a seatbelt during the time of the accident. Luckily for me. I managed to get away with just a scar to my forehead even though I was flung across the car after being struck. I'm still flabbergasted I got away with just the scar. I broke down in the mountains late at night back before cell phones. I had my flashes on and my hood up and was standing outside trying to figure out what to do. Two cops and a tow truck drove by without helping me. Hours later a group of teenagers finally pulled over and offered to drive me to a phone to call for help. The cops and tow truck driver didn't want to get murdered. The teens? Have you seen a movie? It's situations like this that they're made for. In fact, you're legally obligated to kill them at that point. I was working at a group home with people who have physical and mental disabilities. We were all eating lunch when a client suddenly was choking. He turned blue and I thought, shti, here we go. I performed the Heimlich and he stopped choking and started to breathe. That was scary. I found my husband unresponsive and called 911. Did CPR. Paramedics came and took over. After 30 minutes they told me he was gone and there was nothing they could do. Tons of friends and family came over right away. For some reason it only hit me when one of our good friends told me not to worry about food or lawn care and she was setting up a food train lawn care for me. That was the oh shti this is really happening moment for me. The first time I walked up to a plane I'd rented for the day. Signed off. Did a pre-flight. Got in and took off. I legally took an airplane out for a spin. And no one was monitoring me. It just seemed like an insane thing. Diagnosed with an incurable cancer at 33. I was given 2 months to live. 1 year later almost and I'm still kicking it. As sick as I was. I'm glad I'm standing here being the badass I am. My prognosis is much better now. I won't beat this. But it's really given me a push to live life and love big. That would probably be having a conference call with my boss and HR telling me I was one of 50 people being laid off due to restructuring. While my, now ex, wife was in the other room packing her things to move out of the house. I live in an apartment with a balcony overlooking a canal. One evening my partner and I were out on the balcony having a smoke. There was nobody around except for a drunk guy stumbling down the path along the canal. My partner commented that he'd fall in if he wasn't careful. And sure enough. He did. We immediately called an ambulance and my partner ran outside to look for help. The guy was twice our size and if we'd tried to help by ourselves. We all would have drowned. Emergency services arrived in less than 10 minutes and pulled him out. He lived. Still gives me shivers to think about what would have happened if we hadn't been outside. Head on collision with my motorcycle and a sewage drain. I had one second to decide to superman off the front. The I can't believe this is happening right now moment came when I was mid air. I got caught in a rip tide. A current that drags you deep into the ocean away from shore. I've never experienced one. So I fought the current and swam against it. I'm a poor swimmer. So I ended up exhausting myself. I'm out in the ocean with two of my friends when I realized I'm too exhausted to float. I remember that thought going through my head and was 100% prepared and expecting to die. I turned to them and said guys don't panic but I have about 30 seconds left. Thank god a surfer saw me struggling and helped my friends throw me on his board. A lifeguard boat came a few minutes later. Finally got together with my crush I can't believe this is happening right now. Drank too much and couldn't get it up I can't believe this is happening right now. 
I feel this on a deep level. She didn't. It's probably not a big deal for most people but that moment was when I got promoted from a $13 an hour position to a $22 an hour position after only being with the company for 6 months. I still can't believe how lucky I am to have jumped so far up the company chain so early on. Asking a girl out and her actually saying yes. You. Oh my gosh he said yes. What do I do now? Your brain. Give me a minute. No one planned for this. There's nothing in the procedures. Just smile and nod until we figure something out. My moment was when I drove my recently murdered little sister's car off the crime scene once the police released it into my stepmom's custody. She had been killed in said car. Edit. Thank you everyone for all the love and support. When I was 14. Just playing the newly released Arkham City. The doorbell rang and the police came to our house in order to tell us our dad died in a car accident. Just ran into my room to have the loudest and longest holler of my entire life. I was 9. My mother and stepfather had gotten into a fight and she decided that everything that caused them to argue had to go. Including me. She got the rifle and chased me. I hid for hours until she lost interest. As I hid in the barn. I was wondering if this was a normal thing or not. Edit. This happened many years ago. Summer of 84. I am living an amazing life now and she isn't in it. This is only one of the things that happens to me and one of the few I am willing to talk to about. Thanks for the well wishes. And to those that are younger and still coping. You got this. She decided that everything that caused them to argue had to go. Including me. She kicked you out of the house. That sucks. She got the rifle and chased me. Wait. What? I was selected to carry the Olympic torch back in 2002. I still to this day do not know what was submitted that convinced them to allow this. I am not anyone special. Didn't really think too much of it until the day I'm running down the street carrying the torch. People lining the road for miles on end to see this event. It was an experience that I cannot even describe. The time I got punched by a wild mountain gorilla. Backstory. I was in Uganda. Where they sell $500 permits where you can hike into the forest with guides and then spend an hour with the gorillas. If that sounds steep. I believe it's even more now. And is kept high so the locals have incentive to protect over poach the gorillas. Comma one of the gorillas in the troop we were going to visit had the name Punchy in the local language because he enjoyed the teenage male game enjoyed by many species of I hit you. You hit me back. So upon seeing us he ran towards our group. Knocked over one girl. And came to me and hit my gut. Luckily it was a play punch to see if I was interested. And the guards dragging me away to make sure he wouldn't think I was hurt more. But yeah. Wild moment for sure. My wife was robbed and carjacked at gunpoint. When I answered my phone and heard her hysterical voice telling me she was just robbed. My entire world stopped. I didn't know if she was hurt. I didn't know where she was. I couldn't process anything. The drive from our house to where she was one of the scariest few minutes of my life. I remember actually repeating out loud this isn't happening as I tried not to panic on my way to her. Watching the water slowly creep into my house during Hurricane Matthew. I had taken every measure to block the doors with sandbags etc. It was in vain as the water came in through my foundation. Scariest experience of my life and not knowing how to answer my 8 year old son when he asked mom. Are we gonna be okay? When I got an email stating I got the PhD position and to get ready to go to Antarctica. Still can't believe I've been there. Twice. Being recruited to teach English when I was faced in a club in Japan. I choked on a chic filet sandwich at a mall food court as a teenager. My friend had gone to get a drink so I was alone. And I was like. Really choking. Not there's a bit stuck in my throat but every time I tried to breathe. Almost no air got in and the chunk of chicken moved slightly in my airway. I began trying to get people's attention. To no avail. Sir. If you're choking in public. Be prepared to die alone. 
unless you do the Heimlich maneuver to yourself. Which is exactly what I ended up having to do. I was on stage at a concert for a national holiday. Singing with our choir. The anthem among other things. In the first few rows were the biggest faces of the country. The president. Most of the parliament members. Former presidents and former prime ministers. And even the big shots from the army came to sit in the back. It took a lot of practice. But that moment in stage was still mind blowing. How did I get here? I drove from Pennsylvania to South Carolina last year specifically to witness a solar eclipse in totality. The experience was simply amazing. It was like a dream state. The time dad took me out for my first driving lesson. I had never before tried to drive his car. Everything was going great until it started to sleet, the road became iced over. Like a sheet of glass. No matter what I did. Couldn't stop the car from skidding and sliding toward a tree. I followed his instructions and turned the wheel the right way and lightly pumped the brakes as he downshifted from the passenger's seat. Thankfully. No harm came. But we were stranded there for a long time until sand trucks came through and helped us get out of the ditch. And all this happening on the first time I tried to drive. Went to a concert of my favorite band ever. Bought the VIP tickets. Chatted with artist before concert. Ended up going out to dinner with the whole band after the concert at some 24 hours diner. Best moment of my life. I picked up my 8 week old son's lifeless body from his crib. Called paramedics. Rode in the ambulance. Was told by medical team how sorry they were that he was gone. Memorial came and went. I was in shock for about a week. But it took years to process. And then very slowly life went on. I look at my other kids whom I love and still can't believe this is happening now. He'd be 17. Right now I'm sober. A non-smoker. Married. Own my house. And I'm starting a new. Better job at another company in less than two weeks. This year is going to fking rock. I was in front of my mother's corpse at her wake and the guy I was dating was trying to make out with me. I told him to stop. He insisted. I threatened to call for help and told him to leave and to never ever cross paths with me again. Gladly. He left. For good. Semicolon. I was at Burger King once and a guy was accusing the employees of poisoning the fries. In reality it was salt mayo. I was sitting there with my sandwich trying not to die. Was he. By any chance. A slug? One day I'm walking toward my local train station with my then GF. Suddenly the train arrives. We dash for it. She gets in first. Then I get in. Well almost. My ankle gets caught in the door as it closes. I get embarrassed easily so I'm struggling to get my leg in as fast as possible. Yet it won't budge. Everyone on the train is watching including the GF. I finally get my ankle in the door with a quick. Forceful tug. So forceful that my jeans fall down to my feet because of a faulty belt I just bought. So a train cart of about 30 people saw my pants drop and had a nice view of my chicken legs and boxers. I pick him up with the speed of light. Sit down next to my GF and ignore what the FCK just happened. It's pretty hard to ignore it while almost everyone on the train was either laughing, pointing or talking about it as I sweat and overheat like a man stranded in the middle of the Sahara Desert with no water. Fortunately, my GF didn't laugh at me. Until we got off the train. I am not an attractive human being. I'll open with that. I'm a Starbucks prepping my cup of coffee. For a venti I tend to splash some half and half and do three raw sugars. A woman standing next to me says with a smile take some coffee with your sugar. I politely chuckle and hold up a packet of the raw sugar I'm using. My wife don't keep this at our home. So I tend to indulge in the good stuff when I find it. She makes. What I can only image. Is her bedroom eyes at me. Reaches for my arm and says maybe you need to start looking outside of your house for the good stuff. I laughed loud and I laughed hard. Because as far I could tell. This stranger was serious. I laughed all the way out the door and never looked back. 
Edit. I got Reddit silver. I didn't know that was a thing. Thank you. Edit. And the gold as well. Thank you. My husband owns a company that sees him heavily involved in the music industry. We get to go to the artist area of festivals in the UK a fair bit. I can only go to a couple and I tend to choose the basic ones like Wireless and V. I get to see a lot of super famous people up close and personal but I have to pretend I'm too cool to care. I'm not. Hands down the most WT actual F moment was when I was at Wireless and Amy Winehouse came up to me when I was sitting at table on my own and asked if anyone else was sitting with me. I was like no thanks that's great cheers okay cool yep thanks. And she sits down with Kelly Osborne. Then a woman I'd seen with Lily Allen's entourage came up and said to Amy Winehouse and Kelly Osborne also can you watch the kids I need to f can eat. And left two kids with them. And yes Amy was in full Winehouse mode. I was looking around going like f king honestly is anyone going to say something?